If you want to learn how to make Ghibli style textures in Substance Painter, the latest course from the 3D coloring book was made for you. This beginner friendly course will show you just how easy it is to make drag and drop anime style smart materials that you can use in any project. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to consider getting the course. Now let's get into this week's video. Hello everyone, I'm Bastian and today I will be talking about how I made this image. More specifically, the house, because it is the most important part of the project. I'd like to focus on the texturing workflows I used to make it. I chose to use the texture trim for some parts and unique texture for others. And I'll try to cover the pros and cons of both techniques. I hope you will find this video interesting and that you will learn a few things from it. First things first, the concepting and researching phase. When you start a project, it's always a good idea to gather references to know where you want to go. This concept art made by Sion Giljo had everything I needed. Interesting shapes, lots of curves, good amount of details and nice colors. But I wanted to make an entire scene and not just the house. So I kept searching and I found this 3D image made by Mila Vazek. This became my main reference for the colors, lighting and mood of the whole scene. The next step was to find the graphic style and this is very, very important. Especially when you are doing a stylized asset or scene because stylized means a lot of things. There are tons of different sorts of stylization and it's easy to get lost if you don't have a precise target render. I chose the Darksider Genesis graphic style for my project, which I found really interesting because it's actually quite close to a realistic render. But I could have chosen something totally different and it would have still been a stylized project. As an example, I took this diorama from Yenrique Berger. It is also stylized, but in a completely different way. That's why it is very important to have a target render. Now that the base concept of the project is set, you have to start thinking about more technical stuff. How will you make your assets? What workflows will you choose for the modeling, the texturing or the lighting, for example? What software will you use to achieve your goal? The more you anticipate your production phase, the more efficient you will be. For the house, I chose to make modular assets to have more flexibility in the level art and in the texturing. I planned my modularity directly on the concept so I knew how many parts I needed to do. It was also at this stage that I decided to go for a texture trim. A trim is a texture that contains several tiling materials. It allows you to have a single texture map for several objects which helps with the performances of your game because the engine will only have to calculate one texture instead of 10 or 20 or 50, for example. It is very useful and can make you save a lot of time, but it also affects your work workflow quite a lot. When you work with modularity and texture trim, you plan your texture sheet first. As you can see here, this is the skeleton of my trim. There are all the textures I need for the house. Each material has its own space depending on the texel ratio you have established and the space it takes on the object. In this case, the tiles for the roof take half the map because the proportions of the roofs are bigger than the planks. Once you have defined which materials you need and where they go on the trim, you can start making them. I used different techniques to make mine. All the wooden parts were sculpted on the brush, then put on the plane which has the size defined by my texture ratio and texture size. Here the texture ratio was 512 pixels per meter and the texture was a 2K by 4K. So the plane is 4 meters by 8. 
The plane has the same subdivisions as the trim skeleton we made before, which allows you to put your materials exactly as you planned. This plane will be my high res version for the baking, and this one will be the low res. I did a first bake on Substance Designer to be able to create my wood material and be sure it would fit the sculpt. The tiles for the roof were made entirely on Substance Designer. Now that we have all our materials ready, we can open Substance Painter. This is where we will put together our trim. You see that I have imported my low res plane and baked the high res on it. On top of that, I put my wood and tiles materials. That's where having subdivided my plane just like my trim skeleton come in handy. I can just put the materials and use mask to apply them very easily where I want. I can also play with the tiling of my materials to have the best result on the objects. Substance Painter can only export square-shaped maps, so we will need Photoshop to rescale them and make our rectangle-shaped texture. At this point, you might think that your texture is finished, but it is not yet. Now you have to start modeling an asset and try your texture on it. The way you will approach your modeling will be different than what you might be used to because you must think your edge flow so it can be applied correctly on the trim with the good texel ratio and the less deformations possible. Using a trim will make your UV unwrapping kind of a nightmare, I gotta say. You can see here that a lot of parts are overlapping to ensure that the tilling is correct and that you won't see any borders of your texture. Let's take a step back and see how we ended up with UVs like this. I have made an object really quick and unwrap its UVs normally. Once you have that, you must resize them so they match your texel ratio. To do so, I will attach this 8 by 8 meters plane to my object. This will be my guide for the rest of the steps. Here, I take all the UVs and rescale them. Now we have this big square and this small UVs for my object because my object is far smaller than my plane. I will rescale the plane so it fits my UV windows perfectly. This is good. You close. We can now detach the plane. We won't need it anymore. Yes, very good. And open back our unwrapper here and here. Now we will have a problem because our UVs are made for square shaped texture and we can see that when we go to our trim they get stretched. We have to compensate this stretching by going to this option, right click it, set percent to 100, close it, activate and when we will scale our UVs they will go back to their original square shape. Now we know that our UVs have the good texel ratio and that they won't have any deformation when we put them on the texture. This is a tricky part to understand at first, but the more you practice it, the easier it gets. We have seen the process on a simple object, but I'd like to show it on a more complex one as well. Here we have our roof. I've made all the steps I've shown before on its UV. And now you are ready to place them in a way that ensures the tiling of your materials. This is a kind of a tedious part. It's not very complicated, but it can take quite some time. 
you will have to do a lot of back and forth between your UVs unwrapping and your modeling phase to adjust your edge flow so you can unwrap your UVs correctly on your texture. It doesn't matter if your UVs get out of the texture because the tiling continues even outside. With all of these steps done, we have the good tiling on all our materials and we can say our trim sheet is finished. We can begin the modeling of all the parts in our house where our trim will be applied. It's also time to think about the rest of the house. These wooden components cannot benefit from the trim texture because they require a unique normal map. This is where the trim sheet meets its limitation. A trim can only make you use generic texture and not specific ones. That's why I decided to create a second ID for those parts where I could have some unique texture made specifically for those elements and create an interesting contrast in my asset. I sculpted all those elements in ZBrush. Finally, we are in Unreal to integrate our assets in the engine and build the scene. Here we can make the final adjustment on our texture by testing them with the lighting. I used static lighting techniques to make my render that allowed me to have more control on the shadows. We have now reached the end of this video. I hope that you see the interest in using a texture trim sheet, but also its limitation. It's a peculiar workflow, but once you master it, it allows you to save a lot of time in your project. I invite you to visit my ArtStation page, link in description, if you like this content. New projects will be added as time goes by. Don't forget to press the like button and to subscribe to this channel if you found this video interesting. Take care, have a nice day, bye bye.